Yeah, my name is Chris Pollard. I'm sound engineer for Mumford & Sons. I've been working with Mumford & Sons since the first album. Uh, we're now on the third album, uh, Wild and Mind, and we're into the second year of touring that album. We are, we're touring L Acoustics PA, K1, K2, um, and the SSL L500 console. Also have uh, some Waves plugins running on a Waves sound grid um, and some analog, a little bit of analog outboard in the mix. Um, and that's all synced up with uh, the Delta Link going into Pro Tools. So, we, so we've got um, 64 ins and outs recording as well. Um, so I've got around 76, 76 inputs. Um, I've, just, I've built up the show file, so for the way that works for me, I've got my VCAs and masters here in front of me, and then I've got all my instrument banks on this, on this tile, and then I have all my effects and groups on this tile, so in a way it's kind of replicating a, more of an old, you know, an old, uh, old school way of working, you know, analog setup. That works for me. Um, so I can access any instrument through the VCAs. I kind of work through my VCA groups. Um, that's my quick route. When I've got that many inputs, 76, to, you know, it's kind of, you need to be able to get to them pretty quickly. So using my VCAs and using the Q function, the query function, um, is a great way to access, very quickly access those channels. So the board, the way I've laid out my board is, is built around that. And the appeal for me is that you can you can really, you can put anything anywhere and so you can think about your habits and the way you work and design, design your show file around that. Um, and it's a way that just really works for me. You know, someone else might jump on it and find actually this is, you know, I don't really understand this, but that doesn't matter because it's like you can just, you can put anything, anything anywhere or next to each other, shift it around. And that's a, yeah, that's a really great thing. And you can keep on evolving, you know, as your kind of, as your show's evolving, as it naturally does over a year of touring, you know, you can kind of just shift things around, come in, think actually, you know, it'll work better if I have that stem there next to this input. I've got a lot of stems, which I've built into the file. I don't use any auxiliary on it actually. So, um, and that's a new way of working for me, but it works, it works very well. The way you can, you can send to the stem and then send that stem onto another stem. You can really do whatever you want with your stems, which is a really powerful tool. Um, that's something that you just can't do on, on other consoles. So on, the, um, on my stems, a lot of my groups that I've got going on are, are using the onboard effects. Uh, and I'm always going to the stereo bus compressor, the classic SSL bus compressor, um, you know, kick, snare, bass, all, you know, whatever. It, it's a very powerful, great sounding compressor. And uh, one of the real good, great features of it is the parallel, basically you can dial in and out the, the percentage of mix. And so therefore have parallel compression running. And you can really dig into the compressor to make it work however you want it to. You know, if you want to emulate certain other compressors, then you can kind of, you can really dig into that. I also use the face, uh, the face scope tool, which is a really useful tool on the console. So if I, if I need to check the phasing of two inputs, I can send them to the face scope left and right, and I can see how they're, I can see how they're lining up. And then on the, on the actual input channel, so for the base DI, I can use the all pass filter there and slowly slowly tweak that filter, shift it around until, until I can see you know, that it's fully locked up. I use that tool a lot. Okay. I, I go to it a lot. And like I say, I think it's good because just flipping the phase on something gives you another sound, but actually being able to shift it all the way across and, and really just listen to the sounds as well. So you've got your visual to tell you exactly what's going on, but you, know, you can kind of sculpt the sound that you want as well. When I'm mixing the show, um, I'm always using this, this section of the board here. EQ, compression, I go there. You can go to the touch screen as well, but I prefer, you know, just dialing it in. Um, when we're in sound check or if I'm playing back, 
I'm working on it, then I'll, I tend to use the touch screen to reference what's going on in more detail. But for me, this section works well. On the Fender Super Reverb amp, which Marcus plays, I've got two. That's uh, paired up with a, a kind of boutique um, amp where I've got a 57 on one and a KSM 313 on the other. Um, on the 313, I've got the uh, all pass filter, which I've used the face scope tool, sending both the projector amp, um, SM57 and the KSM 313 on the Fender, to the face scope tool. I use the, the all pass filter on one of those inputs to get it to sound just how I want with those two different amps, two different mics, which are coming, which are, you know, the one guitar is going to. Um, they then get sent to a stem, and that stem has a, a waves insert on it, so I can combine the two, the two mics to get the sound I want. And then that stem is sent to uh, my master band, you know, the whole band, on the, which is then sent to the master. It's using the console, it's using the face scope tool, it's using the, uh, the all pass filter. It's also using waves and then actually ends up going through the tube tech uh, on, the one, on the final stage, which kind of brings together the whole band. Um, so that's, yeah, they're, they're like the different um, links in the chain.